Hello there, my name is Aaron Ai, and today I'm excited to take you through an introduction of African spirituality. And so if this topic resonates with you, why don't you leave a comment, share, and click on the like button and come on this journey with me. Enjoy. The continent of Africa is known to have some of the most diverse, richest, and ancient of cultures on earth. Africa is home to numerous cultural and religious practices and beliefs. Some of these beliefs developed within particular African societies, whereas others were introduced from outside the continent. Indigenous ways to communicate to God or a supreme being will always be part of a culture as it gives a sense of ethnic identity to Africans. This is one cultural characteristic that distinguishes one individual from the nest. It is established that all African cultures believe spirituality is a divine way we communicate to the universe, to God, and in the world we do not see. In African spirituality, there is the total devotion of deep love and commitment, often to a supreme being or God, or the higher self, that is the person beyond the physical body, which includes our ideas, spirit, soul, and purpose on earth. Spirituality can therefore be defined as how people see themselves, see the world, communicate with God, and interact with others. This is quite an interesting subject matter, would you not agree? African spirituality can be defined as a way of life in which individuals acknowledge the beliefs and practices of worshipping the supreme being and honouring their ancestors while honouring mother nature. Generally, African spirituality has no written code of conduct, manual or statement of belief or faith. This means that the traditions tend to be shared from generations to generations through observation, oral histories or storytelling rather than being scripted. When we think of written manuals or statements of belief, we may picture the books of the Torah, the Quran or the Christian Bible. But African spirituality is passed down through generations and can be thought to various extents, for example, through observation, research, or initiation. Like every people on earth, Africans have their own way of viewing, understanding, and interpreting the world and the universe. Africans believe there are two worlds that mutually coexist the visible world where we all live in now, and the invisible world where spirit, ancestors, the dead, and the supreme being reside. Human beings are at the center of these worlds. In African belief systems, spirits are common and are everywhere but cannot be seen with the physical eyes. It is also understood that the world is full of good and bad spirit and that the spirit of the earth is the basis of morality in Africa. Whatever these spirits can do directly and indirectly affect the activities of humans, animals, and plants. The marketplaces, farms, rivers and other water bodies, mountains and hills, bushes, crossroads, forests, are all places where spirits dwell. This means, as well as human beings, every creature has a spirit of its own. Trees have spirit, rivers have spirit, and mountains have spirit that dwell in them. Spirit is invisible and is beyond the physical, but has power and can be utilized. Now let's take a look at some examples of African spiritual system. I find it quite interesting to note that there are a number of spiritual systems in Africa through which individuals seek to communicate with ancestors, deities, and nature spirit. All of the spiritual systems share a common belief that everything on earth is of spiritual essence. To make it more practical, all African spiritual systems are believed to be foundational and passed down from generation to generation. Imagine your parents owning a farm business and handing over the business to you or your siblings once they've passed. Well, that is how these spiritual systems have survived. As discussed earlier, there is no written manual used when it comes to African spiritual systems. Individuals believe the principles of these systems are found in the hearts and minds and oral history of the people. Unlike other religious systems such as Christianity with Jesus Christ or the Prophet Muhammad and Islam, African spirituality doesn't have named founders 
for leaders. Akans are an ethnic group of people who live mainly in Ghana and parts of Ivory Coast in West Africa. Akans believe in a supreme being called Onyame or Onyankupong. Akans believe that you can communicate to Onyame, ancestors and spirit by offering prayers or pouring libation and offering sacrifices. Similar to the phrase, cleanliness is next to godliness, Akans believe in the preservation of Mother Nature, who is known as Asasiya. In the Akan spiritual belief system, every individual has a soul name determined by the day in which they were born in. For instance, a male born on Sunday is called Akwesi or Kwesi. A female who was born on Sunday is equally called Akusia or Esi. Again, a male born on Tuesday is called Kwabna while a female born on Tuesday is called Abena. A male born on Friday is called Kofi, while a female born on Friday is called Efia or Ifwa. The Seres are an ethnic group of people found in Senegal, Gambia, and Mauritania. The Seres have firm belief in the supreme being called Rug. Sarah's spiritual system revolves around ancient chants and poems, veneration of and offerings to deities, as well as spirit and initiation rites. Seres address prayers to Pangu, as they perceive them to be intermediaries between the visible and the invisible world. In addressing their prayers to the Pangu, the Seres chant Asian songs and offer sacrifices such as bulls, sheep, goat, chickens, or laying out of harvested crops. The Pangu are believed to be ancestral spirit. The Yoruba people of Nigeria amount to about 40 million of the population. As a people full of rich culture and stories, Yorubas dance to a drum called Bata while chanting to the Manda goddess Yemoja. They believe in Olodumare, the supreme being and his servant Oduduwa. In Yoruba land, many people of African descent have returned to their roots to explore the Yoruba spirituality. Like all African spiritual systems, the Yorubas focus deeply on self-exploration, self-development, and finding one's purpose in life, learning one's destiny or fate, interacting with spirits of nature, as well as one's ancestors, and setting oneself right with Olodumare, the creator. In Yoruba, Orishas are messengers that intercede between the creator and mankind. Orishas are considered human beings who have leaped into divinity. This means that Orishas are spirits. Remember, when I mentioned spirits earlier, I considered good and bad spirits. Bad spirits are called Ajogun in Yoruba. Rather than focusing on salvation like the Christians, Yorubes focus on living a good life on earth. There is a firm belief in reincarnation, which is the rebirth of a soul in another body. The Bay speaking people form a collection of about 23 languages. The most popular of Bay language is the Ever language, followed by Fon, Jen, and Fla Flera, amongst many others. Voodoo or Voodoo is an African spiritual system practiced by the Bay speaking people. Voodoo means spirit. In Everland, the supreme being is known as Mau. The creator may also be known as Mau Kitikata or Mau Sugulisa. In this African spiritual system, there are lesser deities known as Trowu who influence destinies. They are capable of granting favors and inflicting harm. During the transatlantic enslavement of Africans, many African cultural ethnic groups found themselves in countries such as Brazil, Jamaica, Cuba, Grenada, and Trinidad and Tobago, where they fused and adapted but maintained their African spiritual practices to create recognized systems such as Santeria in Cuba, Kumina in Jamaica, and Voodoo in Haiti. Indeed, these practices have tangibly contributed to the battle towards freedom from enslavement. By engaging in spiritual practices, we are able to gain a sense of understanding of who we are and get a sense of belonging. As Africans, our spiritual and cultural heritage shapes our thoughts values and our worldview. Getting in touch with nature and our ancestors helps us connect with our past and gain a better understanding of our present. African spirituality also serves as a cure and remedy to generational problems. By engaging in spiritual practices, Africans believe that 
we inherit our family stories, narrative, and views about life. We don't just inherit our skin tone, the color of our eyes, or the broadness of our shoulders from our parents. African spirituality helps one to avoid repeating the same unhelpful patterns and attitudes of former generations. On another side, African spirituality also serves as a guide through life. African spirituality also gives a sense of self-awareness. It serves as a guide through life. Spirituality makes one focus on what really matters to them and it helps them understand their destinies. By practicing spirituality, one can also fall into spirituality scams or schemes. Fake spirituality is a means by which individuals use spirituality to exploit others. People might use their spirituality to scam others into giving money or making them feel guilty about not donating. Scams like this happen when people take advantage of the need for spirituality. Spirituality can also lead to extremism and dependency. Spirituality can be dangerous because it can lead to extremism. When people focus too much on their spiritual beliefs, they can start to see the world differently. They may become intolerant of other belief systems. Also, people who are excessively spiritual may become disconnected from reality. This can lead to all sorts of problems, including poor decision making. Another thing spirituality can do is to hinder relationships and social interaction. For some, spirituality can take up so much of their social lives that they easily become isolated from the people around them. Subsequently, people become disconnected from people in their lives. In the African spiritual system, individuals believe that after death, the dead enter into the invisible world to become ancestors. Remembering and honoring ancestors is a significant part of African spirituality. This is because individuals believe some ancestors serve as mediators between the supreme being and mankind. It is also believed that ancestors provide protection to their families. When we give time and thought or venerate our ancestors, we are not worshipping them, but rather showing respect to those in our bloodline. We exist today because of our ancestors. Offerings serve as a gift or a way of satisfying a spirit or deity. Offerings can include food, liquid, incense, candles, meat, and alcohol. Sometimes individuals give sacrifices in the form of killing of a lamb or goat to seek blessings. Divination is the practice of attempting to understand the practice and predict the future. In African spiritual systems, there are individuals who are specifically trained to communicate with the spirit for this purpose. Africans believe that shrines and sacred places are the abodes of spirits and deities. As a result, shrines are treated with honor and respect. The shrine is a place where conflict resolution, cultural education, meditation, and moral development can take place. Shrines can range from huge communal shrines to family shrines in one's home. Reinforcing the connection to Mother Nature, herbs, and plants play an important part for fixing and healing physical and spiritual problems. A collection of wisdom of indigenous knowledge on the usage of herbs is passed down from generation to generation. Libation is an aspect of African spirituality that involves prayers, invocation, and praise given to the Supreme Being and other spirits. It also serves as a means of communication to spiritual beings. During libation, there is the pouring of wine or any alcoholic drink on the ground and reciting a prayer to the Supreme Being, Mother Nature, the deities and the ancestors for blessings and protection. In African spirituality, the ancestral role depends on whether the dead lived a good or a bad life. For instance, a family member that lives a life of violence, jealousy, envy, and defrauding others is unlikely to have the privilege of becoming an ancestor. Since colonialism and the enslavement of African people by Europeans, there have been deliberate measures to this honor and demonize African spiritual systems and practices on the continent and then in the diasporas. Demonization of African spirituality is the interpretation that everything that revolves around African spiritual practices 
is evil. African spiritual practices have been labeled old and outmoded. The motive behind demonization is that the colonial powers sought to take dominance and control over African territories politically, economically, and spiritually. To achieve this, they deployed various tactics, including attempts to dismantle African spiritual practices. As generations were persuaded and convinced to join and convert to other practices such as Christianity, sacred places were destroyed or turned into schools, rituals were banned and the knowledge was lost. Africans were made to feel ashamed about their own tradition and way of life. It is crucial that we recognize the value and potential in claiming and preserving African spirituality. As Africans, we need to educate ourselves and create the awareness by actively seeking knowledge of African spiritual practices and reclaiming them. We must support every effort to revive and preserve these practices. We need to promote dialogue and collaborations between various spiritual practices by fostering mutual respect and understanding the gaps that have been created by centuries of colonization.